and welcome to Clapier. In this video, we will see how to get real-time tracking and visualization of a user's location in your apps with the help of the live tracking block available in Clapier. Let's see how to do this with the help of an example. Over here, I have created an app for logistics tracking where employees will capture certain details. Since this is an example, it's very basic and does not really have much fields. Now in this app, I would also like to track the live location of the employee, which basically means that when an employee is on the go, I will be able to see their exact location on a map. For this, I'll go to design app where I can edit the app. You can also see all the earlier fields. I click on add field and select live tracking. This feature is useful for getting tracking details in map view. You will be able to see the route taken by an employee. You can also get information on the date and time in which they start and end their trip the start and end locations, as well as overall distance covered. This block can be configured on the right-hand panel. There are two options for configuring, basic and advanced. Under the basic section, we have label where you can change the name of this field. So let's say I given the name Logistics Live Tracking. Next, we have description where you can enter some text which will appear at the bottom of this field. Usually, this is used to give some helpful information to the user or you could just leave it blank. Next, we have automatically stop tracking duration. Now, sometimes an employee may forget to stop tracking. In that case, the system can automatically stop the tracking after a certain number of hours. Just click over here and select the number of hours in which the system needs to keep tracking until it finally stops. So let's say 10 hours. So within the 10 hours, if the employee has not stopped tracking, the system will do it automatically. Then we have required. You can mark the live tracking field as required by enabling this option. If you do so and save it, you will see this field is now denoted with a red star mark, which indicates that when an employee fills in all the details in the app, but if they forget to start the tracking and submit, they will not be able to do so since this field is required. Do note that the live tracking only works on the mobile app as indicated over here. You can download the Clapier mobile app and the moment you create your app or make any edits, it will be live and ready to use instantly on the mobile app. So if I go to check the mobile view, it will look like this. Now let's say for this example, if the trip is to an individual and this is selected, then I do not need live tracking. However, if the trip is taken to a business, then I require the live tracking to be started. Such display conditions can be implemented in your app. So if I go back to the edit mode and for this live tracking field, on the right panel, I'll go to the advanced section. Here we have display this field if, and you can implement the display conditions. If you have worked with spreadsheets earlier, you would have come across implementing various types of calculations and logic. The same can be implemented in Clapier as well. We share a similar library, but in the place of cell numbers, we have the concept of variable names, which you can find at the top of every field in brackets. To pull up variables, all you have to do is type in at the rate and you will see all the fields that you have added to your app. So I'll type in type and this corresponds to this field equals to business. This means that if this field is selected as business, only then will the live tracking field be displayed in the app. Now, whenever you give a display condition, you will get an additional option that says retain value if hidden. This option should always be enabled if you need the values to be retained upon submission or if any edits are made to the submission. I'll save this. Now I'll check the mobile view. Now over here, you can see the live tracking block is no longer visible. If I select individual, nothing happens. But if I select business, as per the display condition that I have given, it will appear in the app. Since this is a required field, I will not be able to make any submissions if I do not start tracking. However, if I select individual, since the live tracking block is no longer there, I can make a submission. Now with the live tracking block, you can also get the start and end time of the trip the start and end location as well as the overall distance covered. So making use of them, I can calculate the total hours taken as well as getting the overall distance. So let me just add another section and change the name on the right panel. Let's say tracking details. I'll save this and add a field using the calculations and logic block. There is a separate video on how to use the calculations and logic block in detail. It is linked in the description. On the right hand panel, you can configure it. First, I'll give a name to this field. Let's say total hours taken. And in the formula over here, again, you can implement spreadsheet formula by pulling up variable names from your app. So I can type in at the rate live tracking. Now over here, you can see a list of preset variables all to do with live tracking. You can get the overall distance, the start and end location, as well as the start and end time. So to calculate the total hours taken, I'll select end time minus 
the start time and since the time is taken in minutes and I want to calculate the total hours, I'll divide this by 60 and save this. Now I'll add another field using the calculations and logic block. Change the name to total distance traveled. The distance traveled is taken in kilometers, so I can just give it in the description over here as a helpful information. And under formula, I will type in at the rate live tracking and simply select the distance. Now this is very useful if you want to calculate the pay for employees. You can do so by adding another calculations and logic block using these variables and multiplying it by the rate. Now since live tracking is only visible when the type is selected as business, I will give the same condition for this tracking detail section. On the right panel, under advanced section, I will type in at the rate type over here equals to business. Again, make sure that the retain values if hidden is enabled if you want to retain the value. Click on save. Now let's go to the live app. Over here you can see the mobile screen with the Clapia app downloaded. So I'll go ahead and click on the app. Then I'll click on the logistics tracker app. The app is live and ready to use. So I'll fill in some details. Now since I've given the display condition, I'll select business to start live tracking. Now since this field is marked as required, if the employee forgets to start live tracking and they click on submit, they'll be unable to do so because they'll get this error message. So once I click on this, make sure that the mobile's location is enabled for this app. If it is not, you can change it in the mobile settings in app permissions. Click on OK. For now, these fields will remain blank and I'll click on submit. You can view the submissions. Click on a submission to view all the details. Over here, you can see a green drop-in. Let me just expand this. So this will be the starting location of the employee. You can also see a blue indicator that shows the exact location of the employee at this moment. Now, if I were to go back to the web app and go to the submissions tab, click on a submission and you can view all the details. The moment the live tracking submission is made, it will be available in the web app and you can see the employee's location at any point whenever they are on the move. You can expand the map and zoom in to see the exact location. You can click on the green drop-in to see where they have started and the date and time. You can also select the blue indicator to see their current location. So if the blue indicator was somewhere away from the green drop-in, you will be able to see that current location. Let's see how to stop live tracking. In the mobile app, once they open the app again, they can click on the icon at the bottom of the app, click on the submission and they can click on stop tracking. Another method to stop live tracking, click on the three dots at the bottom and if there is any ongoing live tracking, this option appears. They can click on it and then click on stop tracking or they can click on this to view the details and then click on stop tracking. The moment they click on stop tracking, this will be updated instantly on the web app. So here, I'll just refresh the submission and you can now see that there is a red drop-in which will indicate the end location of the employee and the date and time. Now if I scroll down to the submission, the tracking details has been calculated. Now since I am in the same location and stop the tracking almost immediately, the values are quite less. Now the mobile app will also work in the offline mode. For field employees working in remote locations, the live tracking will still work. When they stop the tracking, the system will be updated automatically once they get back the internet connection. Now let me show you an example where the employee was on the go. Now over here, you can see the green drop-in which indicates where the employee has started their location, the red drop-in that indicates where they have ended it, and you can see a red line which indicates their travel route. Now we also have yellow drop-ins. This indicates that the mobile device had a weak GPS signal or if the mobile's battery was low. You can click on the yellow drop-in to see the battery percentage and the location. The yellow pin appears on the map automatically whenever there is any weak GPS signal low battery or other abnormalities with the device. You can also click on the grey line which indicates that the mobile's GPS signal is weak. If you click on the grey line, it will tell you that it could not fetch data. And for this particular submission, you can see the distance travel calculated as 48.36 kilometers. Total hours is calculated as well as the total distance which is same as the one mentioned here. So based on this, you can also calculate the pay for the employee. 
Now what if you need to mark locations on the map to ensure that an employee has visited an area? You can have additional markers for that on the map and for this you will need the help of workflows. For example, let's say a field employee starts from a location and has to make visits to warehouses and then end their location. I need them to make a submission every time they reach the warehouse and I also need to see that on the map to ensure that they were at that location at the time of submission. For that, I'll make some changes to the app. I'll go to the design app. First, I'll add a field for selecting said warehouses. So over here, I will add a field and use the single selector block. I can configure this block on the right hand panel. If you wish to know how to configure this block in detail, there is a separate video on it. It is linked in the description. Let's say I give the name checkpoint and then give all the warehouse options. Let's say warehouse ABC, just for example, and I'll click on save. So anytime the employees at a particular warehouse, they can select the option and submit or edit the submission at the next stop. Now, if I need the markers to appear in the map when they are at the warehouses, then I will need to give a workflow for that. So I'll go to step three, which is workflows. And under edit submission flow, I'll click on add step and select the edit submission node. I will tell you the reason as to why I'm giving the workflow under edit submission flow in a moment. Now to edit this node, I'll go to the right panel. Again, there is a separate video on this in detail. It is linked in the description. Since I need to edit the map with additional markers, I'm using the edit submission node. I will select the app to be edited, which is this app. So it's logistics tracker. Then on the filters, since it is the same submission, I will select submission ID. Filters is used to map submissions to one another. Here I will type in at the rate submission ID. Under set field values, I'll click on add field. In the drop down, I'll select checkpoint. Over here for set field values, you can select any number of fields whose details will appear in the map. I will select checkpoint here. So if I want to add additional fields, I can simply click on add field and in the map, let's say I want the date to appear or maybe the vehicle number, I can simply select it and pull up that variable. For now, I'll just keep checkpoint, which is the warehouses. I don't need any other configurations, so I'll click on save. Now I am giving the workflow here under edit submission flow because at the beginning when a submission is made, they are not selecting a warehouse just starting tracking and only later when they reach the location will they edit the submission to know that they have arrived. Since they are editing the submission, that workflow will come under edit submission flow. Else, if you want additional markers when they are making a new submission, it will come under new submission flow. Or you can also give workflows under review submission flow if they are changing statuses. And based on that, markers should appear on the map. It depends on your requirements. Now let's check this out on the mobile app. I've opened the app and I'll just fill in some details. I'll select business, start the live tracking, click on OK and I won't make any selection for now for the warehouse and I'll simply click on submit. When I view the submission, I get the starting green drop in. Now I have moved a bit, so I'll just refresh the submission. You can see the blue indicator has moved away from the start point. I will select warehouse A now and save this. Since I am editing a submission of my current location, the workflow will be triggered and the marker will appear on the map. I'll refresh it and you can now see a blue drop pin. This will indicate that I have made a stop. Now I have moved away again, so I'll refresh the submission and now select warehouse B and save it. If I refresh it, you can see another blue drop pin. This will indicate my second stop to warehouse B. And now I will select warehouse C and save this. Keep in mind that I am on the move here. I'll refresh and you can see a third pin. I will now stop the live tracking and go to the web app to see the entire map updated there. So I'll go to the submissions tab, click on the new submission and on the right panel, you can see the map with all the locations marked. I'll just expand this, zoom in, you can see the start and end location, the route taken, and if I were to hover on a blue drop-in, it'll tell me the warehouse where I visited. Since in the edit submission node, I only selected the checkpoint, which is why you can only see the warehouse mentioned over here. If I had given additional details, that would be mentioned here as well. So in this way, you can make use of the live tracking block to check the status of the location of the employee when they are on the go. If you have any query on how to implement live tracking for your app or on any other feature in Clapier, you can always reach out to us by clicking on the button over here, or you can contact us directly to support at clapier.com and we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you.